Uh, today, my topic is clinical value for treatment of gynecological disease with microwave ablation. I'm Jiang Tian'an, come from the first affiliated hospital of Zhejiang University. First, uh, I introduce the general application of ultrasound guided interventional in gynecology. One, pelvic view. Uh, effusion, we mainly solve the clinic problems with aspiration or catheterization, especially in complication post-operative. Two, slow therapy, we mainly apply to chocolate cyst, ovarian simple cyst, with uh, injection of uh, of uh, any hydrogenous alcohol or lower macrocol. Three, this implantation, we usually implantation either 125 particles, sometimes we combine with lower macrocol injection. Four, medicine injection, we apply to treat ectopic gestation placenta implantation, placenta residue. Five, percutaneous ablation. This is today's main topic. We treat myoma or adenomyosis with, uh, with some ablation. Generally speaking, there are five ablation methods for solid tumor in our body. Laser ablation is seldom used because it's a small laser area. The other four methods are used uh, according to different uh, situations. How to choose the ablation methods? Uh, HIFA is use, usually uh, used to treat uh, with lesion, lesion with good acoustic, acoustic window without the intestine gas. Microwave usually applied to large mass with abundant blood supply. is uh, applied to deep, stiff lesion. Chemical ablation uh, usually uh, treat small multiple lesions uh, nearly in vital structure, while multiple, multiple lesions with different volumes, we usually, with thermal ablation, combined with chemical ablation. For example, when the lesion uh, with, with good acoustic windows and where there are no Intestine gas, and the lesion is not so large, or uh, no blood uh, supply. Uh, blood supply, we usually with high to treatment. But in the large and abundant with uh, blood supply, it's better for microwave ablation. In this situation, we may use microwave ablation or RFA to treat it. In this deep or near uh, neighboring, neighboring has the vital structure, we can use RFA to, to puncture or injection with lower microgol. In this situation, there are several or uh, different uh, volume of uh, myeloma. We could use microwave to ablation the most of part, but in the surrounding area, because it's uh, neighboring has uh, vital structures such as intestine. So we could uh, uh, combined with uh, local macrogol to injection. 
Now let's let me introduce the uh, the principle of uh, micro microwave ablation. It is electromagnetic waves, and uh, the oscillation of polar molecules can produce follicular heating, heating, caused to tissue coagulative nuisances. The microwave uh, ablation, the fe uh, feature is uh, has heating fast, can produce large ablation zone in short time, especially with two antennas working together. Well, the principle simple RF way is that the oscillation of ions in tissue produce frictional heating with high frequency electricity energy leading to coagulation necrosis of lesion. The feature of RF way is the ele electrode is sharp and thin, so can used to deep or uh, harder lesions. This is guidelines of fibroid treatment in different countries, uh, including USA, France, Europe, and China. It is divided into three situations. When, uh, when the myoma has no symptom, no of this efficient life quality, especially for perimenopause females, it uh, is no need for treatment. Where has no to overlay function. When the own my omas has has severe symptoms such as heavy menstrual flow, anemia, compression. We can uh, treatment it with thermal ablation. The thermal ablation is tendency because minimally, uh, minimally invasive, fast recovery, and uh, symptom released effectively. What's the indications for myoma ablation? Uh, the first is it needs precise diagnosis. The ultrasound MR was the first choice for diagon for definitely diagnosis. Two, the symptoms when the uh, fibroid has hypo uh, hypomonadia. Anemia, abdominal pain, compress. Three, uh, when the patient uh, is not is not no perimenopause sign, because uh, this is uh, my myoma rely on uh, estrogen, which which. Uh, What's which uh, myomas are the in test in, in indication for myoma ablation? I think in the black being, uh, it's indication for uh, indications, and in this situation, it's not suitable for ablation. Uh, in in the past, uh, fast growing myoma is. Required as contraindications, but now there are uh, evidence that uh, fast growing my own uh, is not a contraindication. Now let's talk about uh, uh, contraindications. First one, uh, <clears throat> the diagnosis uh, should clue out the malignant lesions such as sarcoma. And uh, when the patient uh, is in pregnant or in menstrual phase and in, or in breastfeeding period, it is not suitable for ablation. Uh, when the patient uh, with acute pelvic inflammatory or liver and renal dysfunction or with coagulation dysfunction, 
it is not uh, it is not suitable for ablation. How to rule out a malignancy? First, uh, we can use diagnostic curative touch to rule out uh, endometrium malignancy, and uh, with TCT to rule out uh, uh, uterine cervix malignancy, and uh, we we can use my MR or ultrasound and uh, uh, combi combined with clinical features to rule out uh, myometrium malignancy. Finally, we can use core biopsy. When we do core biopsy, we in, uh, in gynecology, we use uh, usually uh, use coaxial needle to prevent uh, tumor or endometrium cells seeding. Why pedicled subcellulose fibroid is not the is not suitable for ablation because it's hard to puncture. When puncture, it uh, can uh, shift off, uh, drilled off. And uh, uh, there, there are uh, intestine surround the uh, the tumor. So when some ablation, it can damage intestine. And when uh, the pedicle necrosis, it may fall off and uh, uh, cause secondary secondary parasitic tumor maybe to be op operated. Now we see some cases. Case, case one, this is a large uh, fibroid. We implanted the first needle and uh, we planted the needle. And uh, when, and uh, with, with two, with two, to enter antennas work, working together, and uh, we see the lesion classification. The, uh, and after the uh, ablation, we see no color Doppler signal, and we see EOS. The lesion is a good, good ablation area, is large. And uh, we see case uh, multiple uh, fibroids. We put uh, one needle and uh, second needle, then working together. Working together, we see this uh, first uh, fibroid has been ablated, and uh, this second uh, second uh, fibroid uh, we see uh, gasifications. Case three is uh, uh, thirty years old. Recently, it's a large appendix, and we see the lesion located here near the uh, near the wall of pelvic. This patient, uh, we should note the two points. One is to to avoid damage the endo endometrium, two uh, is uh, to avoid the damages the surrounding vital structure such as intestine. So we should uh, this is the CUS. We could see wash anterior face and wash out in 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 venous. So. Uh, we uh, we puncture we puncture in this direction, not uh, this direction, to avoid the endo and and So this is the first needle and the second needle. Uh, and uh, when, when 
we uh, in order to prevent the damage the intestine in that testing. So we do artificial ascites, ascites. When the two entities working together, we see the whole lesion gasifications. And uh, uh, after ablation, the CUS shows the whole ablation. And one month later, the CUS shows the whole whole ablation. Case four is a, a interesting patient. Uh, we so from this patient, we think fast. Uh, we believe that uh, fast growing myoma is not a contraindication. Uh, this patient uh, has a two centimeter fibroid two years ago, but uh, it uh, growing it uh, growing fast. Uh, with the size of 8.0 by 7.0 centimeter. Pathology was like, like my Oma, so she do the uh, ablation. After ablation, two days later, in, uh, we with COS, we see it, it's a good uh, ablation. We see in the, uh, here maybe, Maybe a little, uh, a little enhancement, just like here. Uh, but uh, most of the lesion, most of the lesion is a uh, venous place. We see the palation is good, but. Uh, uh, one year later, we see the, uh, le the, 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 the early lesion has small, but uh, surrounding area, we see the enhancement and uh, the size is, the size is six point by five point centimeter. So the patient, uh, uh, is anxious and the went to operation, but pathology uh, proves uh, like myoma. This is a, a special type uh, like myoma called uh, cellular like myoma. Uh, now let's uh, introduce of uh, adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a common gynecology disease characterized by the presence of ectopic endometrium within the myoma trees. There are four general elements with adenomyosis. Uh, the indication of adenomyosis is uh, three aspects. One, uh, with severe a symptom uh, like uh, this monomia to cause low life quality. Two, uh, the, the disease causes the uterine uh, thickness, thickness to larger than 30 centimeter, and uh, it's no perimenopause sign. We see. This is uh, my uh, adenomyosis. And with this with case, case uh, it's located the left uh, wall, left wall of the uterine. We, with microwave ablation, trans abdominal, and uh, we see the lesion calcification. So, uh, how was the strategy of ablation for myoma and adenomyosis? This is the general, uh, spe uh, general specificity. Uh, one is uh, we one is a combi combination of stone ablation uh, with lower macro goal in. Uh, given the situation with uh, thermal ablation, 
and two, it, because the lesion always uh, usually large, so we we usually thermal ablation with multiple antenna and uh, with multiple treatment. And uh, so, uh, although it is benign tumor, but uh, maybe some like like uh, uh, cell myelomas, so we should uh, uh, complete ablation. As, but uh, what's different from uh, adenoma and uh, uh, myomas? I think uh, adenomyosis has uh, additional attention. One is uh, uh, general anesthesia is needed because it's sensitive to pain. When puncture or operation, the patient uh, uh, usually really pay, uh, has very pain. Uh, the adenomyosis uh, is difficult to cure off. Uh, so we, uh, after, after thermal ablation, we should treat uh, combined with pharmaceutical treatment. How to prevent the complete You should note this is the aspect. One is we should to we should protect and to prevent seeding, especially for adenomyosis. Two, we should prevent intestine damage. Uh, study we should prevent pelvic infection. How to protect endometrium? Uh, one is avoid puncture through endometrium. Like uh, this patient, patient, uh, we do uh, puncture in this in this direction, not uh, this direction. Uh, two, liquid injection via SAG catheter or uh, this, so this is ascites to avoid the intestine damage. So we, you, we usually uh, with moving shots to decrease the puncture time, avoid the long time ablation to avoid heating radiation to damage surrounding tissue. Four, we use, usually do needle track ablation when track, uh, when drew, draw back. How to prevent uh, intestine damage? One, with artesitis, like this patient, we can transabdominal puncture or transvaginal puncture through posterior fornex or inject saline through SSG catheter. Two, we should monitor ablation field during treatment. This is, in, this is very important. In this patient, I located the name near the vital structure, we usually with thermal ablation combined with the injection of lower macro gall. Four, we always do prepare, prepare uh, in preoperative fasting and intestine preparations. Five, we should avoid the long time ablation in one procedure. Summary, the thumb ablation is a safe, minim minimally invasive, and effective treatment. The endometrium must be protected during operation. The protection of intestinal wall is also vital. Thank you.